Welcome to Vasopressor Weaning Part 2 and today we're going to talk about those patients that are hard to wean of vasopressors. Um, there's a checklist you should think of when the nurse comes to you and say, hey, every time I'm trying to wean off vasopressors, the patient becomes hypotensive and I have to restart vasopressors. So the first thing, question I ask myself, is the patient sedated? Is the patient still on mechanical ventilation required sedation? Because these sedative agents can cause hypotension. So if they are sedated, try to decrease sedation and see the effect on the blood pressure. Recently we have a patient, we had a patient that every time we try to win off vasopressor, he becomes hypotensive. As soon as we extubated him and sedation is off, his blood pressure really became really good and actually on the high side. So that's the first thing. And if you cannot take him off sedation, you can keep him on vasopressor until he becomes off sedation. The second thing you need to look, volume status. Is the patient volume depleted still? And in ICU, luckily, you have strict INOs, so you can tell based on the physical examination and INOs if the patient is depleted, volume depleted or not, if you need to give him fluid to get him off vasopressor or not. The third case is some patients, they have chronic low diastolic blood, uh, diastolic blood pressure. Their diastolic blood pressure is low at the beginning, at their baseline, and they are okay uh, with it, asymptomatic with it. Remember, diastolic blood pressure is important for coronary perfusion, but some people live with, let's say, they're, uh, with 40 or 50 diastolic blood pressure because, especially in elderly, because stiff arteries, sometimes vascular path with diabetes, so you need to know with these people because remember two third of diastolic blood pressure plus one third of systolic blood pressure equal MAP. So sometimes it's hard to give them to 65. These patients, if you suspect that you look at their diastolic pressure, blood pressure, it's in the low side. Check if you have any baseline reading before they got sick, and if they are chronically having low diastolic blood pressure. Simply you lower this target to 60 or 55 and again make sure all other signs indicating that their shock has resolved, clinically they are doing well and then you can lower this target um, again knowing that they are chronically having low diastolic blood pressure. The fourth case or scenario is somebody with baseline borderline blood pressure somebody telling you um, my blood pressure run 100 over 60 for example or 90 over 50 and I'm doing fine mainly this you see this in a cirrhotic patient some of them not all of them advanced heart failure patients they run low blood pressure so knowing baseline blood pressure is very important because that will allow you to change your target here based on this but again the map usually again um you try to keep it this way but knowing the baseline as i said can help you adjust this again as long as all other signs indicating that the patient shock is resolving and especially if you have and access to previous or baseline blood pressure readings from previous admissions. The fourth thing, one thing you could also help is adding my dodrin. And medodrin, which is an alpha-1 agonist, like only pure, like phenylephrine, but it's oral medications sometimes if you're having issue weaning of vasopressors but again go through this checklist but sometimes you can use it 5 to 10 milligram through the ng tube or whatever you have xpo q8 that usually helps with bringing or getting off vasopressor the last thing is also think is there a possibility of adrenal insufficiency and usually if there is um, a real insufficiency those people will not get better 
and you will they will not come off vasopressor actually they will be on multiple vasopressors and um, and that's an indication we'll talk about it when to add steroids when you add on multiple vasopressor and it's still hypotensin but keep it in mind so go through this checklist and don't hesitate to start midodrine because your goal is to take your patients off vasopressors and move forward because that will allow you to hopefully discontinue central line and get rid of unnecessary lines like arterial line sooner and reduce the incidence of infection thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board